right now, 19 year old college basketball phenom Cole Anthony has gained plenty of fans for his work on the court. He was the second highest scoring freshman in the NCAA and potentially one of the top NBA draft picks this season. But now this native New Yorker is gaining even more fans because of what he's really doing off the court during the COVID crisis. And Cole Anthony joining us this morning from his apartment in New York. So good morning to you, Cole. Thank you so much for joining us. I, I got to say, I'm real proud of what you're doing right now. Proud to call you New York's very own because of what you are doing. So you play point guard for the Tar Heel University of North Carolina. Obviously, everything was cut short, right? You've been home for about yes. a month now. You're using that time to help first responders. Tell our viewers what exactly you're doing and, and, and why you felt the need to go ahead and do this. Um, well, these people here, they're, they're on the front lines. They're pretty much risking their health and their safety every single day to just help the community and help people around us. So, I mean, they're the heroes right now, and they really need all the support they can get. Uh, so you're delivering meals, I understand, to uh, Harlem Hospital in particular. So how many meals did you gather? And you're 19 years old. I just want to point this out. Again, you're a 19 doing this and spearheading this whole initiative. So, um, yeah, we del delivered about 100 meals yesterday, and so I'm just really just trying to help. So all I can do is just help these people try to boost morale. So uh, Harlem Hospital was your first go-to. You plan on delivering to other hospitals as well for those first responders. You know, do, have you picked which one you want to go to next and, and why? Yes, um, we're going to the Brooklyn Hospital Center. And the reason why we're going there is because they're a community-based hospital. And so they rely on pretty much the people around them to help them out. So I'm going to try to help them in any way I can. So it's, whether it's delivering meals, I'm going to do that. Just help them how I can. And do you need help from any of the viewers who want to contribute or are looking for ways to help out as well? Is, or do you, are you set on, on your resources? Um, I think we have some pretty good resources right now. But, I mean, if anyone would like to help, I mean, they can hit me up on my social media. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, just wherever you can. If you want to help me out, just we can talk. I'd love to. Yeah. I mean, I was just looking at your social media, the power of social media. In fact, on Instagram, you have almost 600,000 followers, and you're using that really to your advantage right now to get the word out. You hosted a live Q&A with a doctor. So fill me in on, on what you guys discuss and why you feel the need to, to really get the messaging out there. Um, well, we uh, just I felt it was a good opportunity to use my platform to help some people whose voices just aren't really heard just get their voices heard. And those are the people right now who are on the front lines who need to be heard. I mean, a lot of young people are out there just really not really educated about the virus. And so I felt like it was a good opportunity to help some of my younger uh, fans just help out with that. Yeah, you know, we've been covering a lot about black and Latino communities and how this was disproportionately affecting those communities and they were hardest hit by COVID-19. You know, did you guys discuss that in that Q&A? Did that topic come out about how it's disproportionately affecting people? What were some of the questions you heard? Um, I mean, yeah, we had a few questions. I mean, we talked about how it's the highest deaths with the yeah, black and Latino people, as you just said. But um, a lot of people just don't have access to health care and yeah. are just spreading it unknowingly. So we're just trying to I was just trying to educate some people just along with excuse me, what's that? My fault. Just That's along okay. those lines. Hey, I think what you're doing is, is incredible, you know, using your, your platform to get the word out there among young, young people. Um, but I also want to switch gears here, though, and talk about, you know, you as an individual. You're, you're the future of NBA. Uh, so give me, a little, give me a little scoop. What have you heard about the NBA draft this year? Um, I heard it could potentially be moved back to August. This is all just speculation right now. We don't actually know. <laughs> but um, that's, what, that's the word I've heard right now. Uh, we just saw some of your moves, by the way. You were just dancing. It looked like a group of cheerleaders. <laughs> Got some moves there. Uh, you know, a lot of people are looking to keep in shape. So are you just doing the at-home workout thing while you're in quarantine, self-isolating? Yeah. I mean, I'm doing about pretty much everything I can. Just doing my push-ups, running around my little seven-year-old brother, pull-ups, just anything I can to stay in shape as of right now. Uh, what about basketball? What's next for you? Um, For me, just trying to stay in shape. Stay in shape, That's stay really healthy. That's all I can do at this point. Stay yeah. healthy, make sure I'm not putting nothing, nothing too bad in my body right now because I know it's tempting, especially with all these snacks I got in my house right now. But Oh, gosh. I need your – I need your – your, your, I, need, I need that. I can't stop eating pizza and everything. <laughs> all right, my friend. Hey, when you are – because you are the future of the NBA. When you're an NBA, don't forget about us. Come back and chat with us, okay? Of course. I'd love to. It's really impressive what you're doing. Keep up the good work, okay, and stay safe to you and your family. Of